two, one. All right, welcome everybody to Rolling on Three, a podcast for all three wheeler, all three wheeler owners, play a chance and a place where they could come talk about their ride, things they do, adventures they take, and places they've been. Today I got a special guest, a uh, very famous YouTuber out there. Uh, I have Martin all the way from Slovakia. Martin the vlogger from YouTube. Martin, welcome to the show. Hi guys, thanks dear, for inviting me. Of course, of course. And for those who don't know, uh, Slovakia, explain where that's at. Uh, it's in the middle of nowhere, but uh, <laughs> it's a beautiful country. Uh, actually, because of the COVID this year, I did a lot of, you know, traveling blogs. And it's in the heart of the Europe. It's really like a geographical heart of Europe, you know, so got that's you. where I'm from. Yeah. Got you, got you. So for everybody who wants to know, Martin, what are you rolling on? Uh, I got a 2015 Spider F3S, and I, actually, I call it the Beast. Uh, and actually, this is the very first Spider F3 that has come to to Europe, so I'm quite proud of it. Uh, and I bought it from paper, you know, like never been on a Spider before. So, you know, ever since then, uh, it's a hell of a journey, you know. All right, that's cool. When did you purchase that Spider? Uh, I think I think KM introduced F3 around October, November 2014. Mm-hmm. And that's when I bought it. And it came here in around March 2015. I remember my first ride. I was I was scared as hell. And I wanted to return the bike, but uh, luckily I didn't do that. So So listen, if it was the first KM. Where did you get it from? Uh, no, I said like it's the first F3. Oh, okay. Because the F, F3 was the, like, you know, like for me, it was something new that the KM came uh, mm-hmm. in with. And actually, it's the only spider to this day I can fit in. Like, I'm a well sized dude. Uh, I'm a little bit taller, you know. And um, <laughs> some people may be jealous, but once I won, I won. RT uh, for to ride for free for one year. Wow. I could not use it. I could not use it. Man. No way. So my, my, my friend bought it then, you know. So. Did, you ever, did you ever ride anything before that? Like, like, like bikes? Yeah, like we, 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 we have cars and stuff. We don't ride horses anymore here in Slovakia. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, I was a scooter guy and stuff like that. And um, okay. when I was a young kid, I had a Z4, the BMW. I was mm-hmm. so proud of it. Uh, it was a great car, but I was still missing, you know, it was, it was a uh, cabrio, but I was still missing some contact with, uh, with the road. So that's the reason actually why I have Spider, And it, because it has three wheels, you know, cause I'm, I'm a crazy rider. So I need something, you know, more secure. Is it the three wheel is what you wanted for a long time, or is it just something as soon as you stepped on it, you said, Yeah, I'm I'm I want one of these. My friend friend of mine actually had one. Okay. Like it was the nine nine eight, the RSS or whatever was the name. I didn't like the look. It was kind of roundish and, and stuff. Uh, but when the F3 came, I said like like not a lot of people in Europe will have it. In America, America is actually the prime, North America is primary market for, for, for BRP. Right. So not a lot of people will have it here. And I'm kind of a show off guy. So it's kind of. <laughs> I see your videos. You are a show off guy. Tell me though. Yeah, why, like, why did you go with, with YouTube? Right? Like what was the inspiration behind going for YouTube? I, I simply don't know. Um, maybe like. My first videos are from Garage. I still keep it on YouTube just to remind me how stupid I was. <laughs> but it was it was from, from Garage with the GoPro camera, with no editing and nothing. I simply said what was true, you know, like what was bad about the bike, what was good about the bike. Because literally I was having one of the first F3s, um, like in the whole world, you know. Right. So, and not a lot of, not everybody's doing videos, so. That was the story behind, and ever since then, uh, the videos has caught the attention, and uh, and now it's it's killing me, man. It's like a lot of work that I'm doing, and uh, 
I but see. Uh, also joy, you know. It's like a full time job, your YouTube channel. But you got some nice videos out there. I see you're doing a lot of work, your production. Are you doing everything by yourself? Yeah, so far, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Plus, plus you know, like uh, we've been, I don't believe in God, but I'll say it this way we've been blessed and we have twins now. So that's the full time job. <laughs> I, I have a regular nine, nine to five job. Plus, I have opened uh, MTV Manufacturing, my first company, you know, so we're doing stuff for the spiders and can and wood. Yeah. We're going to talk it's... about that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, as today, like right now, like like two hours ago, I just uploaded that I'm going to do the, one of the largest events for spider riders here in Europe, you know. So, yeah, tell me something about my free time <laughs> no there is no free time you're a busy guy and congratulations on your twins i did see that on your uh, instagram page that's Thank nice you. that's nice yeah. so now tell me i noticed that i guess we'll go into your business but tell me about that idea for the mods for the taillights like like which one like the the brake lights that, that yeah the brake lights that you did where did that come from because that was a great idea was a start. sorry I, yeah um the thing is like i was bored you know and actually it's not my idea it's an idea from a guy from i think qatar or saudi arabia but he was all fine that uh, i will do it so i did it a little bit differently and many things that we are doing, we're doing as a 3D print because I believe in that technology. I believe one day we will print many things. We will just probably purchase some, you know, script and we will print everything at home. So we do a lot of things uh, and uh, there is a lot of things on the table, you know, and some big projects coming up. Let's talk about those projects. Uh, MTV, Martin the Vlogger. Let's talk about yeah. that business venture you got going. Uh, actually, maybe you see it there. I don't know if it's visible, but I have it. I thought you're gonna ask about it. <laughs> this is a this is this is a prototype, like really a prototype prototype. Okay. Uh, it's gonna be ultra short, full LED and ultra light front fenders because I'm tired of them. And the logic is that it's gonna be all for your guys as as well as for I mean like Rikers spider riders and also the rikers as i said so it's we're gonna apply it for basically or adjust it for everyone and uh we do uh have you heard about pedal commander i think pedal commander the, yeah I've, I've seen them out here for the right guy i think they just came out a few months ago yeah yeah it's sick upgrade man it's like it's really sick it's just completely different you know story to ride but however, it's not water resistant. So we're doing mm -hmm. casing for that because guys from, from, uh, from Pedal Commander don't have time for it because they have different businesses. Right. So we do that and uh, there's a lot of things. You can see everything on martinthelogger.com as well as this show, I will upload it there as well. I got it. Don't worry, I'll be posting all Martin's stuff below at the end of the show. <laughs> so Thank tell you. me um, out there, just tell me about Slovakia, riding around, rules of the road, you know, all that stuff that goes on because I'm based out of New York City. So this is going to be a lot interesting for viewers. So they want to know, like, what's the riding like? You know, are the police after you? Uh, <laughs> potholes, uh, <laughs> a lot of potential. Yeah, I mean, oh. like you have, to, you have to understand that. Uh, yeah, I did a lot of Central Eastern Europe riding. I have like 80,000 kilometers, which is like what? Like, 60,000 miles or something like that, yeah. plus minus. And I, I'm not hitting highways, so that's basically all twist and you know, curvy roads. Mm -hmm. Slovakia, it's a beautiful country. It's like four million people, so it's like part of, of New York City probably. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and we have mountains, we have beautiful lakes, we have beautiful nature. And yeah, I'm, I'm always riding to crazy countries like you know, like if I will tell you I've been to Albania, you will you will think maybe it's some kind of shithole somewhere, but it's beautiful country, less developed but beautiful. I've been to Romania to amazing Transfagarashan. If you if you heard it from Top Gear, you know, like they Up said here. once that 
it's one of the best roads. So yeah, I did that. I did Serbia, I did Montenegro. So a lot of exotic countries for you guys from, from US, but it's all good here. Uh, but the reason why I have three wheeler here, the true story is that one thing is me riding crazy. The second thing is like, yeah, there can be a pothole in the middle of the corner, you know, and, or a brick, it happens, you know, like, <laughs> uh, so I hit several bricks, I hit several big potholes, nothing wrong with the bike, I'm still here, so that's amazing about these three wheelers, <laughs> but you know that on your own, you know? Yeah, yeah, I know, there is a lot, we, we have to navigate a lot of potholes in New York City, I mean, you get your good <laughs> riding, you have to leave the city and go upstate to get the good riding in, but uh, right now the riding season is about to come to an end because we're yeah. ready for the cold in the winter. I mean, how is it out there? When do you get the cold? You know, you know, you know the story. Story is like there is no such a thing as bad weather on the badly dressed rider. You know, but uh, <laughs> yeah, we we getting we getting like. Like we ha we are having snow. We have two seasons, four seasons, you know. Like uh, and we're gonna do like minus ten or something during the winter time. So like regular stuff, probably the weather like in New York. Yeah, we get cold, but I I, I understand it's about your gear, but I have a tolerance level that I'm yeah yeah there is there is definitely <laughs> I can't do it. I see people that do. God bless them. Yeah, but I can't tolerate. But you know what? Once, once there is a march, there is the first sunny day. Uh, I'll go for a spin, you know, one hour. You know, let my okay. body freeze and you know, come back home. You're so. not gonna have any time anyway. You got the babies there. But... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? Why the name? Why'd you name it the Beast? Is it because of the way you ride, or because of the way the bike hands? No, it, it, it's it's her. You know, it's like a super you. crazy bike, and I have a lot of upgrades there. And I turn it into a really like crazy machine. It's like, it's really crazy. Now let's talk about those mods. What did you do? Uh, I mean, definitely like the worst thing that Ken M does with all respect, I love those guys, but those are the shocks. So if Casey would like to do something, I don't know how it is with Riker, but basic stock shocks here, they are really bad. So that's the thing. By our own, with all respect, you know, like he's a great guy, so I have to have it, you know, uh, so the sway bar. And then I have the, the EQ remapped, but during the winter time, I will do the stage two. Okay. I have the cat delete, you know, the, you know, to have the better sound because actually it decreased the power, but sound yeah. is important. Yeah, you need the sound. KM doesn't make good sounds. No, no, no. Uh, plus, no. I have the exhaust that I'm repairing now. I don't know how it will go. Probably <laughs> it's going to be the one of the most expensive videos I have done because I'm repairing Akrapovich, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the thing. And Pedal Commander is a sick upgrade, you know. I have PPA wheels. They are beautiful. I'm just sad nobody does the, the real wheel, you know, the bigger real wheel. Right. Uh, but it's a little bit complicated. I mean, like, there are those, you know, with the chains, but I don't like to replace the belt with the chain, which is, you know, it's a pain in the end. I understand. So, yeah, and, and you know, a little bit, some some look upgrades, which are not that interesting. How, how much money are you in on these upgrades, Smart? Uh, my girlfriend's going to be listening to this. Don't worry, I, I get it too. I just bought an upgrade. <laughs> Go ahead. I, I I think like eight grand or something, you know. I uh, man, eight but, but, grand. But, but, you know, like, but yeah, some some of them I receive for free, so you know, like, so it's more. <laughs> I just invested eight. We'll keep it at we'll keep it at a safe number, eight grand. That's <laughs> I mean that's not bad because I've yeah. had mine for two years and I'm probably into 3000 right now yeah so i saw your video man talking uh, about all of the useful stuff you put <laughs> you know i try to keep but, it useful this way i could um my wife can understand no i need this on here so that's why it's all useful stuff you know it didn't come with the bike i have yeah. to buy this stuff yeah and you know like there are two things first i absolutely like 
this about KM stuff. Like everybody can personalize it, you know. Yes. And that's beautiful because I'm not a hater, you know. There are some real ugly upgrades, but if somebody likes them, you know, just go for it. If somebody wants to put uh, big ass speakers, just go for it. It's your call. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. With Riker, yeah, there is. A, I think I'm always like with the Riker. You have to be careful how much money you put in, because you can end up very easy on a spider, which I think a little bit doesn't make them sense. You know, like I see what you're saying. Super, super crazy. You know? I see what you're saying. I think that it's not even like when I talk to the Riker owners out here. I don't think it's like a cost thing. I think it's a look thing more because yeah. it seems like more people went for the Riker just because of the look. They're not even caring about the price point when it comes to, you know, I had that this mod, this mod, then, you know, if you had enough money, you are in the spider's territory. But I just think that so many people like that different scaled down look. They don't yeah. even look twice to be like, oh, I should have bought the spider, you know? Yeah. Yeah, but it's getting uh, real popular out here. But um, the, because they, of the, yeah, Kenem is doing great job, man. Like with all the promotions, superstars, hip hop guys, you know, they're you know going into communities. Yeah, and I think they they really like did a great job because first of all, the the women are writing now, which I absolutely like. It's because of the Riker, because it's a little bit, it has the automatic transmission or whatever it is. It's it's called what? Drive CVT, shaft. Or, CVT. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's great, you know. Uh, the price, it's like you can buy 600 Riker for what, like eight grand in the US? Yeah, Nine grand, 600 is, like. yeah, about eight. Yeah, and that, that's great because, you know, people can, can afford it, can try it, you know. That's, that's just amazing. No, it's no, popular. no, it's a it's a great price point, and you're right. It's putting a lot of people into the KM community. It kind of took New York by surprise, though. I mean, the marketing, it wasn't like a buildup. It was just they just threw everything out at once, and everybody was like, "What is that?" You know, it's like, and even my dealer that I went here, he's not, he's an authorized KM dealer, not a sole KM dealer, and he was like, when I went can't even keep them on the shelves as soon as the can ams come in gone it's like really I, yeah i was actually on a waiting list for when they first came out to get it out here i had to wait let's see for four months just to get it i ordered okay. it in february yeah I had the to thing wait. here is like and you actually asked it, this question i didn't reply uh what is the how, how it is to write it some some rules or whatever right um we are the, you know, like we have like big union. It's called European Union. Okay? European Union, so, yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm a li I know a little bit of politics, a little bit of geography. Go ahead. So, so it's like like U.S. Okay, we have these tiny little states, and uh, Slovakia is the only country where you need to have a, a riding license for a motorbike to ride a spider. I know there are different rules. I don't think in states you really need a motorbike. A ride, driving license you do but in, in yeah in some states yeah in all uh new york states you need a driver's license and you have to get a motorcycle endorsement i believe i don't want to stay all 50 states i would say at least 40 of them you need to take okay. a t test can you do these tests like like on the riker or on the spider can you do yes that? now they opened it up for three wheel before uh, at New York City before they didn't do it and now they opened it up I say in the last couple of years that you can get a three-wheel license now so it's becoming okay. a thing but yeah, before this, it was two wheels yeah this is a great thing because actually I bought it in 2015 and similar out here because when people started buying the three-wheelers they need because in New York uh it's, if it's less than four tires and it goes a certain speed, they're going to require you to get a motorcycle license. The problem was people were buying these three-wheelers and they were classified as motorcycles and these people were showing up to the road tests on them. 
and you had to let them take the test because technically it's a motorcycle, right? So I think as time went on, they say, you know what, we'll just turn it into a three wheel thing because what do you, you can't tell people no after a while. Once they start showing up with it, you know, it, it is what it is. And if there's no way to uh, get a license for it, then what's the ticket? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So are there not a lot of KNMs out there or what is the ride of choice out in out in Slovakia? Uh we have, I have like a couple of friends having having uh KNM. They're elder people, so they're riding RTs, you know, so they're mm -hmm. always slow and I need to wait for them. But Slovakia is not really about uh spider or Riker. Uh but we have our friends from Russia, they have a pretty big, big club. Poland, which is neighboring country, it's a mm. big club. So Czech Republic, we used to be Czechoslovakia in 89 still, you know, like back in the day. So we speak the same language. So people are coming here, we ride together. So oh, that's it's cool. like, but not, we are not as crowded as you guys. Um, it's, it's not the thing here, you know. Well, like I'll, I'll be organizing this thing um, for the Europe. We have one big event. It's called Gross Glockner. Mm -hmm. It's an uh, event that's happening 10 years on the same spot uh, in Austria, next to the Rotax factory. That's oh, okay. Yeah, because all the engines are made in Austria and they are going to Canada and Mexico so they can put it together. And stuff. Okay. So, and then there is a really a beautiful mountain pass with a great epic road, one of the top 10 roads in Europe, probably. And so that's the biggest event. And there are like 200 spiders and Rikers meeting, okay? It's not a lot. And I'm a aiming only for about 50, which I think in case you're doing rides in, in New York, like Team Spider, those yeah. guys. <laughs> yeah. Come on, it's like, it's like more people, you know, gathering there than I will be doing for a whole Europe. You know? <laughs> well, yeah, usually when we have a, a big ride outs like that, it's um, everybody just shows up. I mean, if you just didn't ride all year, you just show up. So you have a ton of bike. It gets crowded. I mean, and you gotta understand, New York City, even though it's very, uh, very highly populated, it's very small. So once two, three hundred bikes go out, they 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 shut everything down. It's the highway; no one can get by. It's just it's just like it's a true takeover. That's when I put it up on my YouTube. people must love you. Man. Yeah, yeah, people it, must it, love you. It turns into a show. It turns into a show. It's nice though, you know. It's nice that everybody gets out, and they always for wonderful causes and good promotion, and it's good time and. You know, it's you, you know, like uh, I've been to you. I used to live there for for summertime. You know, several years because we have these work and travel programs for university students. So we go, we work our asses at, at, for you guys. You know, earn some <laughs> pocket money and come back home to our small countries. You know, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, so I love America. And my aim with the bees and why I'm doing the YouTube channel is getting a little bit more popular and I would like to travel the world with the very same bike. So uh, yeah, first on the list is the whole Europe and then I would like to ship it to America. So hopefully one day, guys, I'll be riding with you. Well, if you, come to a, if you come to America, you better look me up so we could do a ride, man. Are you kidding me? And maybe when I retire, that'll be one of the countries I'll stop and visit. So I'll be looking you up too, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. But that's dope. That's really dope. So and when you riding, you have like uh, your own motorcycle club or riding club, or you just doing everything solo? I like, to, you know, like sometimes I'm organizing things because I can speak different languages and oh, also okay. I'm traveling like, uh, like uh, I'm traveling quite a lot because of my day-to-day -day job. So for about 15 years, I'm traveling like all the countries around Eastern Europe. So I'm organizing small, you know, groups, but preferably I ride it solo. I don't know why, but uh, I don't like to wait for people, you know, like no, not a lot of people can catch up with me. Yeah, I see because, you, you, you do your thing out there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, 
in Slovakia, it's getting worse with the uh, with cops. But more east you go, you know, there is like the better, like faster you can ride. But of course, like as for the legal proposals, I'm always respecting speed limits. You know, of right. course, of course, yeah, me too. Always, I respect <laughs> all laws, all all safety, everything. I buy the book one hundred percent. There you go. But, that's what a safe rider does. So, you know, I don't want to put anything out there that people think anything different. Ride exactly. safely, uh, abide by all the rules of the road. We have a problem out here, and it's not with actually bikes. It's the dirt bikes, because dirt uh-huh. bikes are not legal in New York City or ATVs. So, really? Yeah. So we get a lot of young guys that ride those all over the streets recklessly back and forth and it's a it's a problem with the police and they don't like it so they kind of like try to crack down on all bikers so it's just like okay. whoever you can catch you can catch because those dirt bikes you can't catch so you know sometimes you know you might get it and you're like listen man that's not me i don't ride like that but you know we have a problem out here with those and you know i mean they're gonna do what they're gonna do i mean I don't recommend the reckless riding of dirt bikes through the city streets, but you know, I can't yeah, I mean, like it, it, like there is. If you are talking really about like uh, breaking the rules a little bit, you know, I like of course it's for me. It's like how I reset my head, you know, put thinking onto something else. And what I usually do, I go super early in the morning when there is almost no traffic. Because uh, I, first of all, I, I like there is no traffic. I'm not really, uh, you know, uh, putting into danger anybody else. Mm. And the second thing is a little bit slippery, you know, and I love it. It's just, <laughs> you know, I just simply love it. Actually, I have best time riding when it's just right after the rain. It's just amazing, man. It's like, it's just amazing. If you understand the bike. No, I, I understand throwing out the back tire when you're making yeah. the turn. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> it is a nice, just, cool feeling. Yeah, yeah, I get it. But out here, it's uh, it's it's more traffic until you leave the city and then you take the yeah. ride up. But me personally, I like the open road more than the speed of it. Like, okay. I'm not really, uh, you know, a speed demon anymore. That was many years ago when I was on two wheels. Now I just like to enjoy you know, just getting out and taking a long trip. I don't really care the speed. Just I want to put some miles on. Right now, yeah. I you know, in I'm in a lot of traffic, so it's very hard to get the miles up. But as time goes on, and when I do get a chance to go out, I just like putting the long distance and not the speed. But I, you know, sometimes you have to turn up and you know, give it some power and open it up. I mean, what's the point of having a bike if you can't? Open it up. Yeah, that's true, man. That's yeah. true. So the the F three you have is it different from the US models? Do they make any modifications to make it, or is it just one way? Um, luckily for me, this F three it's all like US model. Okay. Unluckily, the Rika here is like. And the Ken, Kenem or BRP or Kenem on the road team, they will not tell you, but they are locked, you know, like they are locked in terms of performance because of the EU emissions laws. Oh. So I was like, I was riding the Riker rally and I was, I have a video with the route, like 100,000 views. I'm doing just speed, you know, and I, I just wanted to compare it. And I was like, this is way too slow. And everybody was talking like, Martin, that's, that's not, like, it's really fast. What you're talking about? Really? And after three months, like, later, I just realized, like, it was locked. Oh. It's just a matter of one click in the software that they have to do it in the center, which is not legally correct, but they can do it. Then it opens up. And then I understand why you guys are buying those records, because it's a beast, you know? Oh, but, okay, that's interesting. But, but when it's when it's locked, man, it slows it. As you know, it's, I don't know. It's, it's really like turtle or whatever. It's just really, really slow. You know? 
Yeah, that's... have a look on the video. It, it doesn't go, man. It's just it's very slow. I gotta check that out. I gotta check that out. Yeah, because I can't say the Reich is slow, man. I mean, I get up. Yeah, it's like like what four point five seconds or something like yeah. that. Sixty. Yeah. Well, with when it is log, it's like seven. Wow. It's like it's like thing. riding a school bus or something. <laughs> and and many, many many things on my bike because we are not allowed to have the aqua poetry here because of the decibels. We are not allowed to do the T D cat. We are not allowed to remove fenders. And all of these things I've done. There is nothing legal on my bike anymore, you know. I cannot go to Austria. I received like 900 euro fine because I was speeding, but also they wanted to, you know, took my bike. Wow. Just, yeah, so I'm not going that way. Not anymore. <laughs> but you know, it's not that far of a difference out here. If you mess with the emissions, then yeah, you can get the fine. But most of the time you won't. But the loud pipe is a giveaway. And you the ticket for the loud pipe out here is about 160 US. Can they um, measure it on, on the road? Or they will send you somewhere. No, they'll try to say that your your um, it it'd be like a noise complaint. So it'll be like excessive noise. I mean, they're not going to measure your decibels unless it's like a specific, uh, NYPD unit. Yeah. And if they confiscate your bike, they'll they'll test the decibels and tell you your you know, but they will try to tell you that any aftermarket exhaust is a violation but it is what it is but out you here know, out here that's know, the basically what they'll get you for is the loud pipes you know like i don't agree a little bit. I, I understand when you're in the city like it can be a little bit annoying i understand it completely but there is one thing i, I did this big like kind of comparison with the with the RS, rls pipes and la monster cat delete and and actually, for for one day, I was riding with a catalyzator on and, and the stock pipe on, and it was so dangerous, man, for me because nobody could hear me, like overtaking and stuff like that. So for me, of course, it's a little bit of show off. Of course, I like the sound, but it's also a security feature. And so from that respect, I don't understand why they are so like, because there is not like. 100 people in an hour going with a loud pipe, you know. Listen, loud pipes save lives, right? That's an yeah. old, old yeah. saying. And, you know, most guys, and it's true, you do it for two reasons. You like the sound because the Riker sound is like a low-end lawnmower. You know, it's like yeah. it's just a hum. And it's, truthfully, it's ridiculous. So you have to get a nice pipe. You need that sound. And true, you know. You want to hear it and you want people to hear you. you know, and yeah. in a high dense traffic area in a high area like we like in New York, it, you you barely notice it. I mean, it's so much going on. You got a fire truck, police car, ambulance, sanitation truck picking up garbage. You got outdoor restaurants, you got, you know, music playing, parade shows, and you you're really gonna come after me because my pipe is loud. That's really what annoys <laughs> you in New York. It's busy as it is, a loud yeah. pipe, right? I say, like, okay, yeah, whatever. I'm gonna do it. I did it already. Too bad. And you know what? I think there's just too many loud pipes out here for the police to even care anymore. So it's just yeah. pretty much it is what it is. But yeah, do you guys have um? speed cameras out there uh we do it's not in austria it's really like i'm from bratislava and very close it's vienna vienna is quite well-known city right in mm -hmm. austria and those people they are having so many cameras that's not second reason why i'm not going to austria okay because <laughs> of the speed camera and they have it not in, not the front facing cameras they have the the rear facing cameras like real, like they're checking your license plate from the back. All oh, right, bad, you know. I right. don't care about those front facing. <laughs> we have some of the, these in Slovakia. I just don't care. I, in Slovakia, there are, there are really like low amount of um, standstill or how do you call them? Like really, we have type of cameras. we have a lot of those cameras out here. A lot, and you know, I'm not going to say I do it. 
but I'm gonna say a lot of my bike riders just either eliminate the plate or they cover the plate. Yeah. So to avoid the cameras and getting the tickets. When, when I when I told you like one day I would like to come to US and ride uh, from the east to the west and of course Tale of the Dragon is one of the roads that I need to take. You know. Oh, Tale of the Dragon. But I'm, but, but I'm so afraid, you know, like probably shipping the bike and the whole road trip would be not as expensive as my fines and tickets. So I need to really start saving for that. You know so, what you're going to need? If you're going to do it like that, I mean... Well, like jail tickets? <laughs> no, no, no. It'll just be fines. It, it, and no one's going to jail for a bike out here. Please. They, they got enough problems out here. There's no one's putting people in jail in the U.S. for riding a bike. Matter of fact, you'll probably get stopped by the cops. And once they find out who you are, they'll probably just want your autograph and take a picture of you. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Because yeah. I'll have like uh, 6,000 followers. Thank you very much. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> you know what? It's 6,000 followers, but 100,000 views. Remember, you know, you got yeah. a big channel. So it's not just the followers. You know, a lot of people look at your videos and they don't follow. You know, it's like what they do to me. You know, I have 100,000 views and only 500 followers, but... I get nothing but emails and, and and messages, and I'm like, "Hey, you a subscriber? Oh no, I didn't subscribe. I just saw your video. Uh, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. So please, everybody, <laughs> you know, hit the subscribe button. But yeah, definitely. Uh, you're doing a great job, man. Uh, I like the idea. Uh, we needed somebody like you, you know. Thanks to do man, these podcasts. And, uh, yeah. You know, it was crazy because you know I, I've said it so many times in other videos, but I was like. You know, when I started doing my videos, I was like, I wonder if there's a podcast I could listen to about, you know, people own can ams and things like that. And I searched and I couldn't find it. And I said, hold up, could I be the first guy to do a podcast? <laughs> so I just ran out and did it and just put everything I could together to start a production. And then I was like, OK, let me just reach out and see if people are interested. And surprising enough, I have a lot of people who are interested I, I was shocked myself I get I get I must get an email every week from someone who says hey I want to be on the show and you know between scheduling my job and you know my family and you know I'm I'm juggling the same thing now I'm in the early stage and you know it's it's a little hectic so I'm trying to get as much people as I can and then you know um stagger it out because my riding season is over which is good so i could focus more on the yeah. podcast now you now now you need to stack up the videos and, and podcasts so you can right. live through the year right right so that's what i'm doing and then, you know I, I i just dropped a video because i just did some work i spent some more money so that's going to be the last um modification video i do for the this season then i have some other videos set up for just in my garage and then i have like a few more podcasts coming up so uh, i mean it's busy but you know i like it and people are liking it and people are gravitating to it so you know i just gotta you know look for some more guys a lot of cool companies and guys have reached out to me want to do some things together so you know i got things in the works so you know i appreciate the support Appreciate the love everybody's giving me from the Can-Am community. You know, I want to try to start getting some different types. I want to get the slingshot. You guys got slingshots out there? Uh, yeah, we do. Yeah, okay. we do. So, yeah. I'm not super... I mean, like, um, I have big respect for the community uh, of the slingshot riders. I just I just don't... I, I like the front look. I, I don't like the back. Now, a lot of people reason. say that. A lot of people yeah. say that. Yeah. And then if you add the, the fourth tire and that now you have a car. So yeah. It's a it's a it's a different type of look. But that, actually that, that another thing that is coming for me in twenty twenty one, I would like to do a different three wheeler videos. Uh so like Morgan is having cool three wheeler, you know, like there are like I was so surprised when I did the research that there are so many different manufacturers of three yeah. wheels. And some of them are really cool. Some of them are ugly and bad. Yeah. Really cool. No, it, it's a lot of people, um, a lot of manufacturers are set, starting to see the three wheel community coming up heavy. And I guess with the success of the Riker, it's be really popular. People are 
companies are saying, let's get on this bandwagon. It might be the new wave, but we'll see. I hope. Have, you, have you seen the, have you seen the, sorry, uh, have you seen the, the Lean in the Riker project? It's yes, from, from US uh, somewhere. Yeah, the, um, what is it? Tilting Riker? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, they are going to be on the show. They're oh, still, really? Yeah. yeah. They're still in their um, last phase of production. So okay. I've been speaking to those guys over there and, um, uh, when they're ready but to you need to ask you need to ask for money man that it's going to be a huge promotion for them a Riker guy doing podcasts <laughs> having them on the show nah like like three percent each sale for the next six months let's hope so because if it's a it's a, if it's a good product and i get to launch it then yeah i'll be coming after them for royalties but if it tanks then i don't want to have nothing to do with it so <laughs> i got to see how the Riker community feels about changing their ride but yeah, we're going to talk about it. We got some, we're going back and forth, but. Can't wait for that. We'll definitely be listening to that. Yeah, I mean, I got, and you know, there's another company that's putting something out, um, Panther Customs. They're, okay. they're redoing the Riker plastics, the front end. So they're coming up with a whole new front end design that you could just snap on and snap off. So, you know, I, I'm also talking to them. They're in their production stage, so. They also have, uh, they want to put some time on the show, but, you know, we'll, we'll see. You know, right now, I'll, um, I'll bleep their names out of this episode until they confirm, you know. No one, yeah, yeah, yeah. no free promotion, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what, what do you got coming up? You know, let the people know, the ones that are not watching, the ones that are just listening to the show. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to fix the, the exhaust. That's my videos, you know, like I will be playing about that. And it's a winter time. So for me, it's uh, stacking up with uh, some garage videos, you know, and uh, also uh, there are different companies interested for me to do some reviews on, on traveling stuff like, like items and stuff like that. So, and definitely I'll be working on the tour. So that's a big time consuming project. And we have this thing that I need to, you know, finish and test. And we have like another eight or nine projects just, you know, to, to finish, to test, to, to do. So it's going to be a busy period, you know. So. All right. And I have brand new studio. So I'm just throwing in money. Uh, I just bought <laughs> big new lights and nice. uh, new equ equipment and stuff. So. <laughs> You know how it is, you know. Yeah, I Better do. cameras I do. and stuff. Like that. Yeah, I'm working my way up too. Well, you know what? That's that's been great, Martin the Flogger. Uh, thanks for being on the show. Listen, um, I got. I'll be posting all this information down below. That's Martin the Vlogger. He's on social media, YouTube. Uh, check out all the things he got going on. Business ventures, rides. All types of stuff. The man is busy. Let me tell you, he is busy. I thanks for him taking a uh, brief time from his busy schedule to be on the show. Thanks, everybody, for listening to my show, Rolling on Three, first podcast for three wheelers. If you want to be on the show, email me. It's rolling on three, number three wheels at gmail.com. There's also my YouTube channel, La Love Rod Full. If you want to know what that means, email me. I'm tired of explaining it every five minutes. On Instagram, I'm Shadow Black Riker. Y'all don't know what that means. I've said it a million times. I don't have to say it again. Uh, my Twitter account is Serving Warrants. That's where I send in questions. Anybody want to talk to me, has questions for other viewers. And you know, you guys can always email me like you do or hit me up on Instagram for information about the Riker. You guys know I take it apart and put it back together all the time. So if you find problems with it, you always hit me up. Everybody does. I try to walk you through it. So um, Martin, once again, thank you for being on the show. It was my pleasure. I'm going to have you back because you're going to have some interesting stuff coming up. But thanks again, man. Thank you.